Okay, so we, every year, every spring, we conduct walleye spawning operations at Cherry Creek Reservoir, Chapter Reservoir, and Pueblo Reservoir. And we collect eggs from the females and fertilize them with milk from the males and then send them off to the, to the Ray or Pueblo hatcheries where the, um, the eggs then hatch out in about 18 or 19 days. And we do that because, for one thing, walleyes are not native to Colorado. And so they were originally brought in in the, in the 70s to Colorado. And there's very few bodies of water that they can successfully uh, reproduce um, in a number that can sustain their populations. For instance, Horsetooth and Carter, uh, they were originally stocked with walleyes, like a lot of other Front Range lakes. And we found that with, we do not have to stock those lakes anymore, the reservoirs, because the walleyes are successful enough in their spawning um, each year that, that there's the hatching success of those eggs is high enough that they can sustain naturally. And that's probably because those lakes have a lot of rocky substrate. Because when walleye eggs, they sink and after they get fertilized and sink to the bottom, they also become sticky. And so in nature, those eggs will stick to the rock, rocky substrate, and they'll incubate there with a lot of water flowing around them so they get enough oxygen, and then they hatch out. Whereas a lake like Chatfield or Cherry Creek, you don't have a lot of rocky substrate on the bottom. It's a lot, mostly sand and muck. And so the one those eggs sink down to the bottom, they'll get covered with muck, and they'll suffocate so because they don't have enough oxygen. So that's why we have to go do these spawning operations every year so we can then restock walleye fry back in the, uh, the reservoirs along the Front Range that get walleye or saw guy. How many, um, how many fry do you, does, do you usually get from, you know, a typical, like from the whole operation from start to finish? Well, uh, well as, as far as fry, first of all, it's, it's like each year we have a cert, certain number of eggs that, um, hold on, stand by. You guys can come in. Yeah, but it does that, you know what I mean, here. You know, we'll usually just kick it along and bring it down there too. It's not like we're picking up a ton of fish. We're picking up a lot of fish. All right, I'm going to tell you. So number of spawn or fry that you get from, or do you have a quota? Yeah. Yeah. What is that number? Okay, so it's actually number of eggs. So each year, before the the spawning operations start, we we have a um, a certain number of eggs that we need to gather that year, and that depends on what our stocking regime is within the state of Colorado for the different biologists. They might alter, you know, increase the number of walleyes they want to stock or decrease, and then it also includes out of state trades because we'll. Colorado and a lot of the other states, um, like Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, um, will and Wyoming, will trade um, yeah. eggs. Say, th for instance, this year we're giving Nebraska 10 million walleye eggs, and and then um, they gave us sauger milt to make saw guys, which is another you know a hybrid that we stock in Colorado. So combined between what we need in state for our reservoirs and then out of state trades. This year we had to collect 120. We have to collect 129 million eggs. Sometimes it'll be it'll, it'll be less. Usually, typically it's about 100 100 million eggs to 110 million eggs. Can you walk us through the process of gathering the nets? Okay. Okay. So um, so each day um, in the morning we go out. We meet here at 7:30 in the morning at Chatfield. We go out in two boats. We have 20 nets that are uh, stretched along parallel to the dam, the whole length of the, the Chatfield Dam, to intercept those walleyes that are coming in to spawn. They want to come into shallow water to spawn. And so we go out in the morning and pick those 20 nets. We pick the walleyes, the males and females out of the nets, and then any other bycatch like suckers or gizzard shad or rainbow trout will throw back into the lake. So after we get all those nets picked, and we bring the fish back in and then sort them. And we sort them between males, and we'll put those in a holding net, a holding cage. And then we look through the females, and we see which ones are ripe, where if you put a little bit of pressure on the abdomen, the eggs start flowing out. So those are what we call ripe fish. Those are ready to spawn that particular day. Um, other 
green other females that you could tell they're full of eggs but when you put a little pressure on their abdomen uh, no eggs come out so those we call green females and so what we do then is those are not ready yet so we'll hold those over uh, one or two or three days and hopefully they will ripen up so like basically like a bird in the hands worth two in the bush rather than releasing them back with the odds of catching them you know not as good as holding them from day to day and then we hold them and hopefully they'll rug it up so when we get ready to actually spawn the the fish we have we squeeze the eggs out of two females into one bowl and then we take two males and squeeze the sperm which is called milt into the pan we use two males per pan because if one male might be infertile then we ensure uh, fertilization with a little insurance and so then we add water to the pan and as soon as that water hits those sperm cells they become modal and they start swimming around and so they swim around they live for about 90 seconds and so we stir the eggs with a goose feather um, with the milk in there and water for 90 seconds and then we add a couple cups of bentonite clay and water and like i said previously those walleye eggs once they get fertilized they become sticky we don't want that in this spawning operation because what will happen is those eggs will clump up and the eggs in the center of the clump won't get any oxygen and they'll die and we don't want that so that couple cups of bentonite slurry mixture um, in the the bowl of eggs we stir that around for a couple minutes and it's kind of like flour and, and dough you know the dough is not as sticky when you coat it with flour so it's the same idea it prevents those eggs from sticking together so we do that for a couple minutes with the bentonite clay mixture and then we go and wash the eggs. So we, we wash all that muddy water out and any fecal material that might be in the eggs that came out when we were squeezing the abdomen or sometimes you'll get some blood clots um, that are in the ovaries that come out too. So we use the goose feathers to pick those out and basically clean out the pan of the mud and the, the blood clots and the fecal material. And then we put them into a, another tank with circulating water and put them into egg baskets where we then let those eggs harden up because the walleye eggs when they first come out of the fish they're very delicate and so over the course of an hour they absorb water and harden up and so we keep them in the egg baskets for an hour and after that hour they're as hard as they're ever going to be and so they're safe for transport and so we'll put them in five gallon water coolers half eggs and half water and then transport them to the hatchery then the hatchery will put them into incubation jars which are cylindrical glass jars that have water coming up the bottom and it just basically keeps those eggs rolling in that jar and then um, like I said in about 18 or 19 days those eggs will ha those eggs will hatch and you'll you'll be left with uh, walleye fry. Uh, can you tell us how long your whole operation is from start to finish? How many days? Uh, yeah so the, um, so the whole operation it, it depends because like in the beginning before the spawn starts each year we have our go our goal for number of eggs we need and so we start sometimes like this year at Chatfield in 2016 we are catching a lot of fish and so we're getting a lot of eggs yeah, but Cherry Creek Reservoir this year is slow because maybe we're thinking we may have missed the peak of the spawn at Cherry Creek because of that mild uh, weather we had a few weeks ago. Cherry Creek's shallower and smaller than Chatfield, so we may have missed the peak. Typically, on a typical year, we go about two weeks. We have gone as little as about a week and a half because we were getting a lot of eggs at all three of our reservoirs. And sometimes we've gone as much as three weeks because it's been a slow year um, at all three reservoirs. So we basically keep going until um, we get the number of eggs uh, that we need each year. Can you talk about your staff and the volunteers and who is involved in this type of operation? Sure. Um, so for the operation in the Denver metro area, Cherry Creek and Chatfield Reservoirs, the, the staff that we employ, that we use, are the Northeast Aquatic Biologists. So the management biologists out of, um, out of Fort Collins and Brush and Denver, um, and then the senior aquatic biologist out of Fort Collins. So that's like the core biologist group that works these two operations. And then we have, uh, we'll solicit staff volunteers from Parks and Wildlife staff. Some of them may have never done this before, but we give them the opportunity to come out and help. And then uh, what I call citizen volunteers through our, our volunteer program. And the volunteers are really important because 
we would not have the manpower to do this without the volunteers, either uh, Parks and Wildlife staff volunteers or citizen volunteers, because they help pull the nets in, they help stir the eggs, they help wash the eggs. And so the volunteer program is, is pretty cool because they get to see if they've ever done it, what we do here and how much work we put into it. And also, like I said, we couldn't do this without the volunteers. They're helping us each year. Can you tell us, can you tell me the importance of um, the blocking the dam access off to other fishermen and keeping boats away so they don't bother the operation? Sure. So we, the, we have regulations at Chatfield and Cherry Creek that um, you're, not, you're not allowed to be within 100 feet of the dam or the walleye nets, the gill nets that we set out, and you're not allowed to fish from the dam from March 15th to April 15th, which is basically brackets the, the spawning operations. And the reason that is is because, for one thing, safety. Um, if on a windy day a, a fishing boat somehow accidentally gets its prop twisted in the net, you're going to have a hard time getting that, that prop um, untangled from the net. And on a windy day, that can be dangerous. And also, um, it's um, the, you're violating the regulation as far as tampering with state equipment, and so you can get a you might get a citation of that. And so, I, one of the big things, in my opinion, is safety because especially at night, you know, if you say you're fishing at night on a windy, uh, you know, breezy night, and you accidentally get caught in a net, you know, and it's dark out, um, you, you might get into some trouble there. Tell me your name, you know, your, okay. uh, yeah. your title and okay. how long you've been in the process. <coughs> okay, my name is Paul Winkle. I'm an aquatic biologist for Colorado Parks and Wildlife based out of Denver. So I, I manage the fish populations uh, in the Denver metro area and then Clear Creek all the way up to the Eisenhower Tunnels and Bear Creek all the way up to Mount Evans. And I've been working with Parks and Wildlife, formerly Division of Wildlife, since 2003. Can I, because um, uh, talk a little bit about restocking the fish? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, after uh, I mentioned earlier that these eggs will hatch out in about 19 days, and the walleye fry, which when they hatch are about a quarter inch in size, they have very small yolk sacs, not like a trout or salmon. So they have to start eating a lot quicker than trout or salmon do. And so what happens is in the hatchery, they start eating each other. So it's, they start cannibalizing each other. So we stock those fry out at a quarter inch in, in like two or three days after they've, they've hatched out of the eggs. And just because every day you come back to the, to the tanks that are holding these fry, you have has, half as many fry as you did the day before because they're eating themselves. And so we stock these fry out at a quarter inch in size after you know, two or three days after hatching. And so, like for instance, at Chatfield here, we'll stock three million of those quarter-inch fry. Cherry Creek gets about four million of those quarter-inch fry. And so, if we get these fry from the hatchery in in plastic bags that have the fry, water, and oxygen that's been pumped in, so a two-gallon bag like that will hold a hundred thousand fish. So, for instance, Chatfield gets thir three million walleye fry. That means we're going to get thirty bags from the hatchery that we, we put out. And that's typically gonna be, um, well, it, we might be stocking fry while we're still spawning fish. You know, if we're going, if it's been a long spawning operation, we've had to go longer than normal, sometimes we'll be stocking while we're still spawning. The brood lakes, like Chapel and Cherry Creek, will also get walleye fingerlings, which have, well, the hatchery will grow to a little bit larger size and to about maybe an inch and a quarter. And that's um, obviously a, a larger fish that you stock, the chances of it surviving are greater. So we want to ensure that these brood lakes keep their populations of walleye at a high number. So we'll stock in April, when those fish are a little bit bigger, we'll stock uh, walleye at walleye fingerlings at a quarter or an inch or inch and a quarter in size and to ensure that we have some insurance, you know, that, that we're gonna have survival of these young fish. And for instance, Chatfield will get about 15,000 of those uh, inch, inch and a quarter fingerlings. And so p one of the big questions we have too is, what is the survival of those quarter inch fry? 
um, you're probably going to have maybe no more than half to 1% survival through the first winter of those quarter inch um, fish. So by stocking those inch, inch and a quarter fingerlings in the brood lakes, that those survival, the survival rate on those will be a lot better than those small fry. And so that's what we do in the brood lakes, the quarter inch fry and then those fingerlings. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, okay, maybe uh, if I want to say if you want to volunteer. Okay, are we still on tape? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you are interested in volunteering and you haven't signed up as a volunteer, I would. What you should do is contact your local volunteer coordinator. In in Denver, that would be Lori Morgan out of our office at 6060 Broadway. And Fort Collins has a volunteer coordinator, and I'm not sure their name, and also uh, Colorado Springs does. So, if, because you have to be signed up and as an official volunteer for liability reasons to help volunteer in any kind of project with Parks and Wildlife. And like I said before, our volunteers are very important to us. So if you're interested, get signed up as a, officially as a volunteer and come on out. Awesome. Okay? Yeah, I think that was great.